In my opinion, the number one tip to know when visiting any amusement park is to always arrive early. In my opinion, you should always arrive an hour early to the park. This is mainly just so you can get all your belongings ready, get parked and everything, and walk up to the main entrance by the time the park opens, so then you can be the first one in line to a lot of major attractions. And plus, you also have the benefit of just having the most time to experience the park itself from opening to closing. It goes hand in hand with my first tip, and that is that you should prioritize the low capacity rides first and or the most popular rides first. This is mainly because these rides get super long waits and they typically maintain those waits throughout the day. And plus, if you pair this with my first tip of arriving to the park early, that will mean you could be one of the first people in line for these major attractions and get on very quickly and even be able to get multiple rides in before the crowds arrive. It also goes hand in hand with my first two tips, and that is that you should head to the back of the park first. And typically at most parks, this will mean the rides there will have the lowest weights, and you also won't have any crowded mid. Now, this is one of those tips that will work for most parks out there, but there are a few parks where this is definitely not a good idea. For. The main park that comes to mind where this is a terrible idea that won't work very well is m with my home park, Busch Gardens Tampa. With that part, the three major rides that always get the longest waits, Cheetah Hunt, Cobra's Curse, and Iron Gwazi, are all located very close to the front entrance, so in my opinion at that park, you should just run straight to one of those three and also follow my previous two tips, and therefore you, you might be able to get into those lines with a manageable wait. Is to not pay for skip the line passes. In my opinion, at most parks, skip the line passes are pretty much worthless because at most parks, wait times will rarely ever exceed an hour, other than Universal and Disney where they typically always exceed an hour. And at least for Disney, buying Genie Plus actually isn't a horrible idea just because it's one of the most affordable skip the line systems at $15 per person for most rides. So in that situation, Genie Plus can definitely be worth it. Also, most parks on most of their attractions do offer single rider lines, and these can be a godsend when it comes to saving time waiting in line. Because from my experience, this set Universal Studios Florida, but when I was in line for Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, the wait time in the standby queue was like an hour, while the wait time in the single rider queue was like half that. So single rider lines can definitely save you a load of time. Also, if you have someone in your group who has like a disability or is an amputee or military veteran, that kind of thing, you can get an ADA pass, otherwise known as a medical pass or disability pass, where you can skip the line and it works basically the same way at most parks, like the Disney Fast Pass. So if you know how the old Disney Fast Pass work, you will, this the ADA passes will be no different. And also just another note with the ADA passes is that most parks will have you be routed up the exit and you won't be able to pick your own row. That also applies to most park single rider lines also. Fifth tip is to eat breakfast and dinner outside of the park. The main reason I recommend this is because it will save you a, a load of money as theme park food prices are often stupid expensive because they know once you're inside of a park that's basically your only option for food so that's how they'll charge you exorbitant prices. And plus, I'll also give you more time while you're inside of a park to be riding rides and, uh, and experiencing other attractions. Tip is to only bring the bare necessities when visiting an amusement park. This is because most parks do not allow you to bring outside food and drink into the park, and they'll only allow you to bring in empty bottles of water into the park, which I highly recommend because they'll save you a load of money on drinks. At most parks, water is free. 
but the main reason I recommend only bringing the bare necessities into many amusement parks is because at most amusement parks, lockers are not that big. So it will save you money when having to purchase a locker because you won't need to buy two or more lockers to put all your stuff in and therefore you can just buy one locker. The final tip is to always bring extra cash with you. Now this can be beneficial for a multitude of reasons, but my main reason for recommending this is because most lockers at amusement parks cost around $2, or you can get like an all-day transferable locker between like $5 to $10 or maybe a little bit more. And another reason why that I recommend bringing extra cash is mainly if you want to experience any upcharge attractions such as a slingshot, sky coaster, go-karts, etc. Which I personally never experienced those upcharge att attractions as I'm not willing to spend that money on them. But if you are that kind of person, bringing extra cash is definitely a good decision.